Hi folks and welcome back. Just like last week, it feels like spring hasn't quite sprung here yet. It's very grey, still quite chilly and windy, but nevertheless I'm really happy to be out here today and I'm really excited for today's video because there is absolutely loads to do. I think it's going to be a video of two halves. First I'm going to pick you up, take you for a little wander, we'll have a look around the allotment and I'll show you a few things that I've been doing and one quite concerning problem and then part two I'm just going to be getting stuck in and the main thing I want to be doing today is getting the beds ready for growing just making everything look a little bit nicer and it shouldn't be long just a few kind of three four weeks and some of the seedlings that have just started to germinate which I'll show you should be ready to plant out so I really hope you enjoy okay so first things first let's have a little look in the greenhouse where it's not looking as tidy as it was a few episodes ago. Firstly, we've got all of this green netting. I'll talk about that <laughs> down here. I've got a pane of glass and that isn't actually for plugging the gap, which I showed off last week. I've still got this gap, unfortunately, but it is to replace this window. Now, ever since I installed the greenhouse, this window has had basically just a tiny chip in the glass down here it leaks like all hell when it's when it's raining it just absolutely tips it down into the greenhouse which is far from ideal and this is kind of where i want the tomatoes to be in these quad grows and as you know it's not great to have water falling on your tomatoes directly it encourages blights but let's have a little look at how last week's seedlings are doing we've got some good news i can see already in here we've got my brassicas and you can just see We've got a line of Romanesco coming up quite nicely, which is really good because last year they didn't germinate whatsoever. I think I might be misremembering that, um, but we've got the cabbages coming up as well, the Primo, the Durham Early. None of the Golden Acre just yet, but really, really encouraging. Nice signs a week on. Well, surprisingly, just next door, we've got no Allium germination just yet. The winter leek and the spring onions are quite old seed, so it might just be that. Uh, but hopefully they'll come okay. Moving down here to the lettuce seeds, you can just see the first few green shoots. We've got some Valmain and some all year round lettuce seeds that are just coming up now. Oh, I love it when you've just got these tiny little green shoots poking out. And then just next door, the peas. We have just one shoot, but that's encouraging. I'm taking that as a win. So there we go. It's just one of the, the most brilliant sights in gardening, isn't it? When you start to see your first little seeds come through. I'm probably going to take the little propagator off this one now um, and I'll put it back on the lettuce and the peas and that's just because once you start to get a good amount of seedlings if it stays too humid in there for them they're at risk of kind of damping off so we don't want that these ones will now be exposed to the air I, hopefully it's warm enough I mean these are brassicas so they'll be fine but anyway I think that's enough seedlings let me talk about something else which is <laughs> not such good news so if we take a look outside, one of the things that I've mentioned a few times <laughs> is that if I was building this greenhouse again, there's a few things I'd do differently. And one of those is the sleepers. You might remember I did put in a little miniature kind of raised bed here that I thought would be nice for lettuces and salads and maybe some flowers and that kind of thing. And at the time I did think maybe it's not the best idea, but you do see raised beds made with sleepers quite often and I thought it would be okay, but <laughs> folks, it's not okay. <laughs> Down here, we can see that some of the sleeper is just starting to completely rot away, which is not good and is making me a little nervous. It seems like this is the worst part. Along the rest of the sleeper isn't so bad, but um, yeah, slightly concerning. And the other thing is that all the way around, the sleepers are just laying on the soil. It's not just soil. I made sure there were an awful lot of stones in there underneath as well. Kind of once a year, I have to go in, and I've done this recently, and basically kind of push more soil and more stones in underneath where there's any gaps. And I don't like it, you know, it makes me nervous. And if I was gonna do it again, I would have put in a gravel base, you know, used all the stones and then just put some solid bricks or something on it, or, you know, put the bricks down and, into the stones or something like that, you know, just putting it on soil where it's wet, not good. Um, so I don't know, I'll just have to kind of keep an eye on this, I guess, and hope that nothing bad happens. <laughs> but it's kind of out of my hands now, that's the problem. Once you've built a greenhouse and put it on, it's an incredible amount of work to move it. So um, 
yeah. Anyway, that's enough of that. I think um, I could talk about that for a long time, but let's talk about my broccoli. You saw the green netting in the greenhouse and you might remember it was falling apart. There was a colossal great big hole in it. This netting does need replacing though, because there's <laughs> a gigantic hole here. And just last week I replaced it with this new netting and it seems to be holding up okay. We really need to get in and harvest. That is something on the to-do list for today, as is getting the beds ready. Now it's looking pretty, pretty rough around here. You know, I've still got this chard in this bed over here on the L bed. I just got around a bit of wood. And over here, I was a bit more thorough with the compost and cardboard, but I kind of ran out. So um, this all just needs, I think, hoeing, basically. I might, I think this year, this is gonna be where I grow my peas um, because I can kind of trail them up along this scaffolding, which is, I think, what they, the scaffolding was originally put in for. So that needs a rework. The strawberry bed, I mean, it's looking a bit scrappy, but it's not too bad. I did do a load of work in here, actually, and I thinned out the strawberries, especially the alpine ones, because there were too many. Um, but I've got some little strawberry, uh, I don't know what they're called, little strawberry plants in the greenhouse ready to plant out into any gaps. So I think that needs a weed. And here, if you've seen this, this is just a bag full of stones, basically. And I normally hide that away, but I've had that out because I've been filling up the stones under the greenhouse. Up here, still missing the pane, but I have started the process of ordering some glass. So I am gonna put some glass in here and that will be nice because it's still quite cold in there at the moment. But next, I think it's time to start on the beds. Now, this bed here is one where I've got some of the only successful cover crops. You might remember, I was really excited to sow these beds with cover crops. They shouldn't look like they do at the moment. They should all be full of green. Alas, none of the cover crops took, which is why I had to go with the black plastic matting. So one of the cover crops did take, and it is this one that you can see here coming up tall. And this is a daikon radish, a Chinese radish. And I'm just gonna pull one up and see what's going on under the soil. Not much <laughs> okay so maybe some of these will be a little bit bigger i'll pull up another one and show you now but the idea is that these are meant to have a big long tap root that fleshes out and goes into the soil and you cut them off at the top with the hoe leave the tops to rot down and as well you get a nice little kind of nutrient reservoir in the soil and this kind of tap root breaks up the soil as well um, it's not been the most successful but they're just starting to go to flower now so I think it's definitely time to lop all these off. And as well, I'm just gonna give the bed a good hoe because there's lots and lots of grass and weed seed just starting to take hold. And we wanna kind of nip that in the bud. Now, one thing I am finding, which is a bit of a shame, is that wherever the radish has been successful, <laughs> Underneath, there is a really big layer of grass seed that is also germinated. So I'm gonna be quite thorough with this, but at least hopefully this stuff will rot down and return some nutrients to the soil. So next step, I'm gonna get quite a lot of compost on these beds, hopefully. Let's go have a look at how my compost is doing. So every year I do try and put a, a bit of compost back into the beds, you know, but I think it's probably fair to say that I've been a bit stingy. And this year, I think I've got quite a good compost reserve. Over here, we've got finished compost. This has been sieved or it's been bought from home. It's pretty good. And probably gonna keep most of that for my chili peppers or anything that needs to be grown in pots or in seed cells, that kind of thing. Um, that's gonna get a lot of use in the greenhouse. But in this one, I've got some kind of mostly finished compost. And then over here, I've got uh, a pile that is, you know, processing down, it's composting down. And to be honest, I've not looked in here for quite a while. And yeah, looks like this has still got a lot of composting down to do. That's no issue. Next door, this pile, which I'm kind of considering as half finished. This one is looking much, better. Now some of this is used compost, it's from my chilies, 
so you can see where there's perlite in here. But I think underneath there's a, you know, there's some good stuff in here. And although it might not be completely rotted down, I think, you know, this is going to be fine to put on the beds. And I think what I'm going to do is just get all of this out and put it all on the beds and then probably rotate that lot into here, give it a bit of aeration and that kind of thing. Let's get in here and have a look. Just double check that this is okay to go on the bed. Yeah, if we have a look, there's definitely some bulky stuff. So you can see there's some kind of grass and a few twiggy bits. But honestly, I think with the way that I'm growing in beds, this can just go on. It'll help suppress any weeds. It'll help block out light. There is unfortunately black plastic that I keep finding and this is from the old woven stuff. So I think what I'm gonna aim for as a start is just two full wheelbarrows for each of the beds. And hopefully I'll have a bit left over and I can do a bit more, but for now, Let's go with this, see how it looks. Hmm, okay, two wheelbarrows for each. Might be a little ambitious. That would take 14 wheelbarrows in total, but um, I've done two for this one. <laughs> we'll see how we get on. Now, I think that looks pretty nice. A few little woody bits, but They've mostly started to break down, so they should be fine in here. And I haven't decided exactly what I'm planting where yet, but I'll be very pleased if I can get all the beds looking like this by the end of the episode. I think it might be unlikely, but we'll give it a go. Let's take a look under the black plastic matting, and see how it's doing. match with this in the wind but all things considered this stuff seems to have held up pretty well for a year well a winter and nice and easy to fold up and it hasn't left shredded plastic flying all over the plot so that's a win Ta -da! now I think all things considered it's looking pretty weed free I'll just get this one folded up we'll have a closer look okay so a lot of the green stuff that you can see is actually kind of blown off, uh, blown off the black plastic matting and things like bay leaves. We've got the golden fennel, still trying to push through. Pretty weed free. There's just lots of kind of gray clumps where the weeds have started dying off. This one, a little dandelion poking through, but generally pretty happy with the job that the black matting has done. And I'm just gonna give a quick hoe where I can see things still living and then start loading the compost on. One thing I'm gonna spend a bit of time doing now though is going through all of these beds with a rake because they are really, really uneven. The ground up here is significantly higher than down there and there's lots of dips and bumps. So I'm just gonna give it a little bit of a rake over, make it look a little bit more uniform. And in fact, before I do that, I'm gonna harvest some of these leeks because I need to work on the ground under those a little bit as well. Last growing season, you might remember, I grew <laughs> maybe a few too many leeks. And this year I really pared down how much space I was gonna give to them. But unfortunately I forgot about them and they went in the ground very, very small, very late in the season. So these are some pretty, <laughs> pretty small leeks. Some of these are multi-sown as well, so they're even smaller. Actually, lots of these are multi-sown. But uh, let's get some of these up and have a look. This is a very late harvest of leeks. <laughs> very substantial root clumps, but yeah, not very large. <laughs> but I'll take a decent amount of these home today and with the quantity of them, I'll definitely be able to use them. So there we go, it's starting to come together. What I've done is I've taken out most of the, the really big clumps of kind of dead grass and that kind of thing. And I've tried to remove quite a few stones as well and even out all of the lumpy bumpy gaps. So I'm really happy with this. One thing that is quite nice is this soil is turning into a fine tilth very easily just through running the rake over it, which is really what you want. And it wasn't like that a few years ago, you know? So I think this is good. It means that all the compost I've been adding has been doing its job. The soil feels really healthy. So before I get the compost on here, 
what I'm going to do is just run the rake over the bit of grass path that I want to, you know, become nice grass path because it's currently full of dead spots and then sow some more grass seed. <laughs> so I spent quite a long time trying to rake through this and <laughs> it's remarkable how much difference the black plastic matting has made. Where this has been exposed to the air, I've been walking on this part quite a lot as well. But not this strip here, funnily enough, which is also feeling quite compacted. And I think that's just the effects of the, the rain and it kind of being open to the elements. So this one, not quite so easy. I'm going to persevere. I'm going to try and break this up a little bit before sowing any grass seed, because if I just put grass seed on top of this clay, it's not going to germinate, I don't think. Now, I'm really not sure whether or not this will take. I'm hoping it will. I have a feeling that the birds are going to come along and eat a, an awful lot of this grass seed, but I think it's worth a try. It will be really nice once it's done to have a little bit more of an aesthetic kind of entrance to the greenhouse. This is all about kind of having this walkway actually going to the greenhouse. This path is just full of stones. It's where the old, up here is where the old greenhouse used to be. Not the old greenhouse, the old shed. And the idea is we just try and lightly rake it into the soil, cover it up a little, so it's not all exposed to the birds. You should be able to hear just how many stones and rocks there are as the rake clangs through the soil up this end. Whew, there we go. That's six wheelbarrows, quite a lot of work, and that's exhausted probably the majority of the compost bay. Let's get it raked out and then um, we'll see how it looks. It's so satisfying to be getting big jobs like this done. Where have I put the rake? <laughs> there it is. So we've got just another little kind of three quarters full going down here. And this has been a really useful exercise. It's been quite instructive for me to see you know, get an idea of how much compost I'm making every year. But this is looking really nice now and my back is starting to protest. I'll show you how much I've got in the bays left over. So here we are, you can see it's pretty much all gone. And I wouldn't say that all of the compost I've made today was made in a year. There's lots of slightly older stuff in here, you know, so it's kind of maybe a year and a half's worth. And I think what I will probably do, you know, if you consider this like quite an intensive application, and I've done half the allotment. So what I think I'll do next year is with all the compost that's made around this time next year, it'll go on the remaining beds, the broccoli and onwards. I will probably apply something to the L bed. The L bed here, I will put quite a lot of compost in here because I know that the peas are very um, hungry, hungry crops, you know, so they need a good feed. So that'll be getting a little bit more. And this bed, probably not. Um, I will save the compost and just work in what's here now. I'll just remove the cardboard. Like I say, that was just a slapdash way to try and keep the weeds down. It seems to have worked okay. It's also a good test for the compost when you put it on, on cardboard. You can see whether or not it's full of weed seeds. But next job for me, I'm gonna get in here harvest the broccoli. But first, I'm gonna have a little break because oh, shifting that much compost is tough work. So here's the little leek harvest as well that I just thought I'd show you while I'm having my little sit down and catch up. And the other thing I wanted to show you, as I've been sifting through the compost today, I've been picking up every bit of plastic that I could find. And the amount is genuinely quite shocking. I don't even know where a lot of this has come from. There's just so, so much that's made its way into the compost. And the vast majority that I've been picking out is this really thin black stuff, which is used for the weed membrane. It's the woven stuff that goes in together. And as soon as it starts to degrade, it just shreds and goes absolutely everywhere. And as well, there's loads of actual like black bin bag plastic that I, it must be from the previous plot owner. I don't know what they were using it for or really how it's got in the compost, but very frustrating. And I'm just always, whenever I dig through the beds, I'm always finding this black stuff. And it's very, very frustrating. So if you're using any woven matting, just make sure to keep an eye on it. Make sure it doesn't start shredding and going everywhere. And as well, I've been finding this new one, which is blue. I'm wondering where on earth that has come from. 
And then I looked up at the roof of my shed <laughs> and realized that it's completely my fault. This tarp that I've just strung over the, the shed roof as a kind of quick fix is shredding itself and starting to go everywhere. So I really need to prioritize getting on top of here and getting that off because that's gonna be blowing all over the place. And yeah, people will be rightfully annoyed with me if the blue star plastic starts turning up on their allotments. Okay, so honestly, I think taking off netting to get to my purple spring broccoli might be genuinely my least favorite gardening job. I don't know what it is. I just hate faffing around with it. The netting always gets caught on tiny little things like here. It just, it just feels difficult, generally. Look at this old dead marigold. Um, oh geez, come on. Generally speaking, I like to try and keep costs down on the allotment and do things on the cheap, but a brassica cage is the only thing I've ever really been tempted to splurge out on because the idea of having something with a door that I could just come in and start harvesting away and not have to worry about bending over and fighting with the netting and potentially ripping it open. <sighs> definitely one, definitely one for me to consider. But the actual broccoli itself is looking stupendous this time of year. Last year I got quite lucky with all of my plants just flowering, slightly staggered. It just seemed to happen naturally. At first glance I thought that all of these were ready to harvest, but actually what I found is that this plant here is fully ripe. These are ready to go. And the way I can tell We've got a nice floret here, and underneath you can see there's lots more tightly packed purple florets, and the same is true of this little one here. So those are the ones that I'm taking, but just next door, there's an example floret here, and at first glance, you've got the kind of purple, the flowers look ready, but when you get in here and you look closely, underneath the floret, you can see the leaves are tightly packed. They haven't opened up yet, and the small florets underneath haven't become fully purple, which I take to mean that this isn't quite ready to harvest yet. It's nearly there, it's getting there, but I'm just gonna leave it on the plant for a little while longer until it's all opened up and all gone fully purple. That way I know that the flavor will have really developed and it should be a perfect little broccoli stem. So there's lots of other stuff for me to be getting on with on the allotment at the moment, but I've been up here about five hours now. <laughs> And I've not had any lunch, which was really stupid of me, but um, I'm starting to get very hungry. And these are very nice to snack on, but um, <laughs> no, <laughs> they don't do much for hunger. Thank you ever so much for joining me. And I mean that genuinely. I really, really value like how many people are watching the channel. It's so, so nice. And I get some really nice comments from people letting me know that my videos help them either with mental health and anxiety stuff. <laughs> Um, which is like so, so wonderful to hear. But also lots of other people say that my videos are helpful in the garden, like practically, which um, I never really imagined would happen <laughs> when I started making videos because I don't think of myself as particularly gifted. <laughs> Although I do seem to have a knack for growing um, quite nice big purple spraying broccoli plants. But um, yeah, thank you ever so much for joining me. Thank you for all the lovely comments. I do love genuinely to hear what people are doing in their gardens at the moment. Um, it's really, really nice when people People are just sharing what they're up to um, and it often reminds me that there's things I've missed <laughs> or things I should be doing myself so um, for the final time thanks ever so much for watching and hopefully I'll see you again next time <laughs>